hey and thank you for clicking play and what i'm going to quickly do in this video is take you through the process of what i went uh, how i did it anyway of installing installing workbench 3.0 on this a1200 i've put a, another blank compact flash card in there an 8 gig one which is why we're seeing this which of course i'd not seen really in the whole ownership of uh, this a1200 because it already had a working image on it until I came to playing around with setting up Workbench from scratch. Now it's very easy to start off by thinking, well, we've got access to emulation. We could set up Workbench in that, copy it across. I've got another Amiga here. I could use that for copying the disc I'm gonna to need to copy. Um, but actually I wanna do it, and this is how I did it first time, was well, what if I didn't have access to any of that? No GoTech as well, none of that. Let's just set it up from scratch from the discs as if we were doing it back in the day. And one of the most important things is the install disk requires you to write to it as part of the setup process. So you're gonna need to make a copy of that. How do you do that? You haven't got X copy, you haven't got anything. And that's when you have to get yourself back in the mind of how things work before you've even set up the machine. Okay, so obviously the things you're going to need is you've got a fresh compact flash or hard drive in the machine. Original discs, including the install disc. So some A1200s were sold, well, at least some packs I've seen don't include that because, of course, not all A1200s came with a hard drive. Um, so you do need the install disc. And because you have to write changes to that install disk, you're going to want a disk to make a copy of that onto. Okay. So that's all ready to go. And you're going to need some um, Welsh whiskey as well. <coughs> right. So as long as you've got all that, um, first thing we want to do is obviously boot from Workbench, which I'm going to do now. Okay, and then basically I want to copy a disk. Um, so let's put the original install disk in. Copy. Please insert workbench. Make sure you read the screen properly because <laughs> as to what disk it's actually asking for. Okay, please replace volume install three. Now look, that's called install 3.0. It's important that when we copy this, we ensure that the new disk has the exact same name. Right, insert disk to copy from, source disk. We've already done that. Click continue. And this is where you're gonna need to have some of this. And the main thing to remember is um, if you've got a very fat bottom glass, um, it's it's more than you think it is. So it's important when you're doing this that you, you do keep that in mind. Insert destination disk. So let's put this disk in. Continue. Dan, when it copies to the disc, you're gonna need some more of the whiskey.
Okay, and then don't forget to rename that. Da, 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 da. So that it's exactly the same name because it's going to try and reference um, that when we use the program in the next step. So I'm just going to eject that. This drive does occasionally think it's got a disk in the drive when it doesn't. Like now. See again, not that it matters because I'm going to reboot anyway. Um, there you go. Sometimes if I just trigger the little thing, it goes away. Whatever. Um, now it's happy. Um, so in theory, there must be a little spring in that that maybe you could replace. Like there must be a little spring that's going pretty deep into the mechanics of a drive though. But yeah, because that'll be spring loaded. Anyway, let's reboot. I bet it's like a little lever and you just need to bend it up again. Right, so here we are. So let's boot from the installed copy. Okay, good. So the next thing we have to do is prep the um, combat flashcard. So in install, you will find HD tools and HD toolbox. And we have to set up the drive type. Okay, um, and I'll link, I'll put a link in the description to where I got this information from. But basically you want to um, change the drive type, define a new drive type. We're gonna call it CF card. Oops. Don't know what I did there. That's fine. And what you can do is do reconfiguration, continue. It might say that, but it will get most of the information. And then, okay, so we click OK. Click OK. Okay, make sure the drive selected, go petition. Now, petitions, what I want to do is I want actually want to, because this is a 30 meg sticker, again, I want to simulate what it would have been like having this out of the box. So the 30 meg sticker means there would have been a, a 30 meg hard drive in here. So I'm actually gonna create two petitions within this hard drive, hopefully. That's what I'm planning to do anyway. Um, so, yep, 14 meg. Perfect, so that's gonna be my workbench petition, okay? But according to the instructions I'm given here, I call this DH0. We will be changing um, this later. Okay, and that's that. So the file system is set to, so we wanna change that max transfer rate to what we just said. one f e zero zero yep click ok and click ok i'm going to save those changes to the drive very important okay 
Then I want to partition it again and I actually want to create a new partition. So I'm going to go to the unused space, which where's the use space? I don't know. It's not there. I want to create another. Oh, sorry. I want to create a new partition in the unused space. Here we go. And we'll call this DH1. Okay. Click OK. Oh, I'm um, sorry. I want that to also be 14 meg will be fine. 76 meg no, 51 meg no, 38 meg no, 26 meg no, 13 meg. That'll do. How big was that one? Maybe that was bigger than I thought. Anyway, let's um, change the file system. And do the same for this one. 1FE00. Zero, zero. Click OK. Save changes to drive. What I also want to do, see this looks like, is that a petition? Because I don't want it. So I'm going to delete that. Okay, good. So I've now got two petitions. I've got DH0 and I've got DH1. In theory, I'm not convinced that first one was actually only 14 meg. It says it is, DH0. Anyway, save changes to drive. Okay, and we're going to exit that. Great. Now I'm just going to reboot. Have some more whiskey. Still got the install disk in. And we have our two drives. Okay, so first and foremost, we want to format them. I'm going to call that, I'm actually going to call that workbench. I said 114. <laughs> That's a lot bigger than I wanted it. It's actually 114. It's okay. Because at the end of the day, I've actually got this one set up to a single partition with um, just under 30, 30 meg. So that's what's on there. So that's the one I'll use for my realistic revisit. This is just to show you the process. 100. <laughs> And obviously, once I've relived what it's like to have such a restrictive hard drive size, then I'm going to create, you know, I'm going to do this again, probably on the one that I'm doing for you now, and do it with two gig partitions or four gig partitions. That's what I'll, that's what I'll do. Probably four gig partitions. Great to have all these lights working again as they should. Fantastic. So happy with this machine. Okay, that's Workbench. And this one, which is actually tiny, so this is quite ironic. But anyway, um, I'm going to format that one and I'm going to call that Games. That's where I'll install some games. Obviously, if you're just doing a single petition, then yes, this is actually a true 13 meg. It's weird because it doesn't actually fit all the... Because it's not expecting such large drive sizes. Clearly, the install GUI isn't built around that many digits, which is quite amusing. 
Right, so there we go. Those are our partitions. Um, so now we can go to install. We don't need to reboot from here because the drives are ready. And we'll go install. And we'll go English. And proceed, install release three. I'm a novice user, yeah, proceed with install. English. Install all the printers, because why not? Because you never know what you're gonna plug in in the future. And we are British. That's the keyboard layout, so please assert the Amiga Workbench disk. So you're going to need plenty of, of, of the whiskey, obviously, for this, because we've got a few disks to go through. I wonder if there's room on the hard disk. It's 113 meg. <laughs> I think there's plenty of room. It's going to be quite interesting comparing, especially with a 30 meg limit, because the PC that I um, had was a 65 meg hard drive. Um, so that was my first PC, the Amstrad 386. So this being essentially half the size is it's quite limiting but the difference is i guess when you're playing games on an amiga you can if you want just boot from the game and in fact many games oh here we go insert extras right so discs that i've done i'm going to put upside down extras Now, first time, in all honesty, this had an error, and then I just opened the the, the um, slider and blew into it, and then it worked. So hopefully it'll work first time this time. Must have just been a bit of dust in there. Yeah, so Amiga games, obviously, even most Amiga, well, a lot of Amiga games can't be hard drive installed anyway, so you don't need the hard drive space to run, whereas the PC, you had to install to hard drive, Therefore, you ended up picking and choosing which games you had room for. You'd sort of choose the two or three games you were going to commit to playing for the next few months. That said, on that 65 meg PC hard drive, that was there was had to make room for DOS and Windows. Amiga Locale Disk. Take that one out. Locale Disk. Proceed. Um, whereas obviously the Amiga Workbench is a lot more lean than having DOS and Windows. Uh, essentially, is what I'm saying. Amiga fonts. So that one was that was quick. I haven't had a single error so far. Don't say it too loud. Amiga fonts. You can tell I've done this before because they're all in the right order. Oh, I didn't even have to click proceed. Right, Amiga Storage. Amiga Storage. Stop thinking you've got a disk in when you don't. And by this time, you should be towards the bottom of your, of your glove.
It's actually very good whiskey, I must say. It's called Pendreef or something, something like that. It's $20 off because I'm a member at the local bottle shop, uh, Dan Murphy's. Um, so you get members offers, $20 off. It's like, heck yeah. Please insert Amiga install. Okay, because um, we've gone through all those discs, so that's that, 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 and that. This copy disc, even though it was a fresh label, labels really don't age well because the glue doesn't stick. It's very annoying. There we go. Remove the Amiga install disk. Now remember when we booted this machine up first time it was prompting for a floppy disk because there was no recognizable hard drive inside and certainly nothing that contained a usable operating system. Click proceed here. We have no floppy drive in there and we've booted to a completely fresh install of Workbench. And we've got our Workbench here. And we've also got our games drive mounted there. I'm not sure why that's showing up as a floppy disk icon. So maybe I've done something wrong, Doug. I'm sure you can tell me. I'm sure many other people can tell me what perhaps I've done wrong. Or maybe that is the right icon. I don't know. Anyway, um, but here we go. There's Workbench all ready to go. Nice, fresh, clean operating system and all done without using a GoTech, without using um, emulation to set up your compact flash card, just done 100% with a set of original discs and a, a blank floppy to make a copy of the install disc. Because if you don't, it will request that you take off the write protection because it will want to write some of your settings to that disc. So I definitely recommend doing that extra step of making yourself a copy before you do that, just in case. So no PCs used, nothing. Thanks for watching. Actually, that's not quite true because I screwed it up first time. So I had to take this compact flash card out, put it in my PC and reformat it. <laughs> anyway.